Hey everyone, it's Chris here, and I want to talk today about Vagrant. We're going to have a quick little introduction to Vagrant. So what even is it? Well, it's a tool for creating and managing virtual machines. You may have some exposure to virtual machines. I did. I used to play with virtual machines before I had ever encountered Vagrant. But Vagrant, it's a tool that kind of sits on top of a virtual machine provider and allows you to more easily create and manage them. Okay, so we're going to see a little bit about what that's about. But to begin with, you may want to go to vagrantup.com and get Vagrant installed. Obviously, it's going to be different depending on your OS. For me, I'm running Linux and sudo apt install Vagrant was sufficient for me. For others, Windows or Mac OS, I'm sure you should be able to follow the instructions and get the thing installed. However, Vagrant is only one half of the equation. As I said, it's a tool for managing virtual machine providers. The other half is an actual virtual machine provider. So you do need to install an application that allows you to run virtual machines. Now, the one I'm using for this tutorial is Oracle's VirtualBox. It's free. Uh, it also happens to be the one that seems to be most commonly used with Vagrant, probably because it's free. So go ahead and get that downloaded and installed. Once you've got it installed, you will have a, an Oracle VirtualBox manager. You don't really need to open this to play with Vagrant. I'm just going to keep this open so you can see what goes on with Vagrant as we use it. So, yeah, let's get started. So to begin with, to use Vagrant, you need to create a brand new directory. So I'm going to create a directory called Vagrant in Intro, and this serves as my project directory for Vagrant. And what I want to do is I want to create a virtual machine that's got MySQL and Flyway running inside of it. Now, it just so happens that there's already uh, what they call a Vagrant box for this purpose. If we go back over to Vagrant's website, there is a Vagrant Cloud here. And the Vagrant Cloud allows, uh, it actually has hosting for a bunch of different virtual machine boxes. Now, I have one that's my own right here. CB Matthews MySQL Flyway. That's the way that box is named. And you notice I've installed MySQL uh, with Flyway in this box. And it's what we're going to use for the tutorial just because it's, it's my box. I know it's in it. But if I take this out of here and just look at all boxes on the cloud, you see there's a whole lot of different sorts created by different people. Some created by uh, official, like official releases by official companies like Ubuntu. Uh, in other cases, uh, you've got stacks of of tools that uh, maybe individuals have released but uh, I'm going to use I'm going to use mine just because I know what it is so we go back to the project directory initially of course it's empty uh, what we need to do is issue the command vagrant init and give it the box name that we want to start with So that could have been any box name from Vagrant Cloud, but that's the one I want to use. Okay, so it says that what it did was it created a Vagrant file in this directory. If I go and have a look, indeed there is just a brand new file in this directory. If I want to take a look at this file, I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, so have a look at this file. Uh, you notice it uh, actually is uh, a Ruby file. You don't really need to know Ruby to understand how to change this configuration. It is just configuration, and it's not very difficult. And there are loads of comments in here. But in my case, we're just going to use the default that uh, the Vagrant init command created for us. And you notice the most pertinent piece of information here is the config VM box. This is the box that we're going to use as the basis for our new virtual machine. And notice the comment says, every Vagrant development environment requires a box. So you need something to start. You can't get around that. There's lots of other options in here that we will go through eventually, but for now let's just start just with this. So if I go back to the command line here, the command that uh, you issue to bring the box up, vagrant up, so that's going to bring the box up. I'm going to just let that go, and we're going to see what happens over in here as that command runs. Right now, 
I've cooked the books so that it seems that I've never downloaded this thing before on my machine. It'll, that's the way it'll be for you too. So first what it's got to do is it's got to reach out and find CB Matthews MySQL Flyway and say, I don't have that cache locally. So it's going to run out to the internet and grab it and pull it down from Vagrant Cloud. I'm going to let this download. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to skip the video ahead to the point where the download is complete. Okay, so the download is complete. And what's that's, what that is going to do next is it's going to say, okay, I got the, I got the box. Um, I'm going to import this as a brand new virtual machine. So the box itself remains static. We can create as many virtual machines as we want based on that initial box. So if we watch the progress indicator, but also the, the, the virtual box manager, you'll see that we end up with a brand new virtual machine in the virtual box manager. As I said, you don't need to have this running, but it's good to see it just to know what, what is going on. So there you see my box was created, and now we're booting the, the, the VM. And you'll notice it's running over here. Now, in the log output, there's a few things I'd like to draw your attention to. First of all is the forwarding ports section. You notice that port 22 on the guest is forwarded to port 2222 on the host. So 22 is the default SSH port. What it's doing is all these boxes have uh, SSH running on them, or an SSH uh, server running on them. So they're listening on port 22. This guy's listening on port 22, but the port is forwarded out to 2222 on my host. Okay, so I should be able to connect to SSH via 2222 out on the host. Uh, we'll see that in a second. There's actually a, a more efficient way to do it than to worry about the ports. The other thing I want to draw attention to is this mounting of shared folders which I will talk about in a moment, but it's worth noting what my working directory is right now. It's home dev base dev vagrant intro. So we do have something pointing at that in this VM. But to begin with, the VM is up and running. Let's see if we can get into it and do something with it. So the easiest way to get into the VM is to run vagrant SSH. So as I said, this gets around all the port forwarding business. If you're running Linux or Mac OS, you'd have an SSH client already installed on your command line. So this would straight up work. If you're running Windows, this would also work as long as you have an SSH client available on your command line. You may not have that by default. And if you don't, you can still get into the box. You can use a tool like PuTTY. PuTTY is a very popular SSH tool for Windows. And the only difference with PuTTY is you have to kind of manually log in. You need to provide a username and a password, and you need to know the port on which SSH is running. I'm actually going to show that. I've got PuTTY running here. I'm going to log into localhost port 2222. I'm just going to open it. It's just going to prompt me for a user. The username on almost all these boxes is Vagrant and the password on pretty well all the boxes is Vagrant. So there you go. I'm in. If it's your first time running it on Windows, it may give you a prompt to accept an SSL key, an SSL cert. Uh, you would just say yes. But that's how you would get in via Windows if Vagrant SSH doesn't work for you. But I'm going to just continue using Vagrant SSH down here. So notice, I'm into my box. You'll notice even my user has changed and the box name has changed. Vagrant at Ubuntu Xenial, whereas before I was DevBase at my system name. So this is a proper VM. It's running over in uh, Oracle VirtualBox. And what does this VM have? Well, let's just poke around a little bit. You'll notice, remember, I had said that this is MySQL and Flyway. I'm not going to go into great detail about what either of those give us. But Flyway is installed here. If I type Flyway, I do get output, so that's proof that it is, it's installed. I can try to connect to MySQL. MySQL, the username for this guy is root, and the password is root for the MySQL database. And that lets me in. It's MySQL 5722. Very cool. But the other thing that I wanted to show is if we go back up to the output, when I was doing Vagrant Up. Mounting shared folders. So this is saying it's mounting slash Vagrant to the directory from which I was running the Vagrant file, my project directory. So 
This here is the path in the VM. So inside the VM, I'm mounting something outside my VM. Let's see if that's true. If I, on my VM, go to Vagrant and do a directory listing, have a look, there's my Vagrant file. In fact, this is the very directory that is my project directory, and I can prove it if I like touch like a file dot text, let's say. So I just added a new file. If I leave this box, if I exit the box, so you see I'm back out in my project directory and do a directory listing. There's that a file dot text. Now it may seem a little bit minor. This is a, an easy way to get stuff into your box, of course, because your box is mounted onto a host directory somewhere. So that's convenient. But it adds more interesting implications because this would allow us to create immutable boxes for an immutable infrastructure. So let's say uh, my MySQL database, for instance. If I create tables in that database, if I, if I save data in those tables, really all that data lives inside that VM. So that VM becomes really, really, really important. I don't want to lose the data. But what if I mapped the location for where the data is stored in the VM out to somewhere real on my physical host? That's immutable infrastructure, and it would allow me to destroy and create the VMs at will, and my data would be intact. Uh, that's something I'm going to talk about in a future video, um, the advantages of immutable infrastructure. Uh, you can do it with Vagrant. It's more commonly done with Docker, but we can talk about both. But for now, uh, I'm just going to get rid of that afile.txt. I don't need it, but it's great that the VM is running and all. Uh, but what would I do if I wanted to connect to MySQL from outside that VM? Obviously, you're not going to do an SSH into the VM every time you want to use MySQL. You may want to expose it outside the VM. So I'm going to go back to the Vagrant file and have a look at the configuration. And there is a configuration here for network. In fact, it's two forward ports. So the default example it gives us is forwarding port 80 on the guest or inside the VM out to port 8080 on the host. So the normal example would be maybe you have Apache running inside your VM. Apache is running on port 80 and you're exposing it out on your real machine as port 8080. Well, we're running MySQL. That runs on port 3306 by default. I could expose it out on... 3306 as well if I wanted to. Uh, I happen to have MySQL running for real on my physical machine so port 3306 is already in use. I'm just going to use 3307 but really you could use any port you want. I'm going to save that and if we go back out to the project directory I want to accept those changes now. I issue vagrant reload. What this does is it's going to scan the vagrant file It'll shut down the VM and find all the changes to that Vagrant file and reapply them and bring the VM back up. So notice now forward, forwarding ports. We have 22, we'd already talked about. We also have 3306 forwarded along to 3307. So that's very nice. In theory, I can connect to MySQL now from outside the VM as long as I hit port 3307. So we'll wait for the box to come up and I will show you that working. Okay, so I happen to have MySQL Workbench installed. So I've already got the configuration here, but notice it's connecting to localhost 3307, user is root, I'm gonna provide password of root, and say okay, and I'm in. So I, that's kind of interesting. I'm connected to MySQL running inside this VM and I don't need to be in the VM. What's even more interesting about this is I could have many different VMs running. Maybe three or four of them are running MySQL. I could run them on different ports. Maybe they're even different versions of MySQL. What's really cool about it is this infrastructure piece, this database, is completely encapsulated inside a virtual machine. And I can do whatever I like with it. I can run it on any port I want. All I need to understand is how the Vagrant file works. I know how to forward ports with Vagrant file. So that's pretty easy. Now, the VM is running 
I probably should show you the command to shut it down. It's vagrant halt. Halt is the opposite of up. I would have thought down would be the opposite of up, but vagrant halt is the command that they use. So this does a graceful shutdown of the VM. So there the VM is powered off. Let's say you didn't want this VM anymore. You can do a vagrant destroy. It'll ask you if you're sure. I am sure. And so the VM is destroyed. All the files associated with that VM disappear. The virtual machine files. But if I look at my directory, the vagrant file is still there. And what's interesting is I can do a vagrant up again and get this machine back like I had never destroyed it. Except, of course, if I put something in the machine. Like if I added database tables or whatever, they are gone. So again, immutable infrastructure is something that we need to consider in a future video. The one last thing I want to show you in this video right now is where the uh, vagrant boxes get downloaded to. It's kind of important to know this because you could run low on disk space and you may want to clean up once in a while. So on Linux and on Mac OS there would be a directory called .vagrant.d in your home. Okay. But notice here, boxes. So I've got two boxes downloaded there. I could delete the box for that guy. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep it around. But if you needed to, to kind of clear house, you could do that. So we've seen the creation of a Vagrant VM from a pre-existing box that we brought down off of Vagrant Cloud. And that's all well and good, but how did I get this box created in the first place? So it's nice that I've got MySQL and Flyway pre-installed on this box, but how did I do that? Uh, so what we're going to consider next is provisioning virtual machines, essentially creating these guys from scratch. So that'll be in the next video.